The GPT-4 isn't just uh, translating, I think. It is more like thinking. It can not only tell which translations is better, even especially when the discourse knowledge is needed, but it can also provide the detailed explanations for the users. And welcome to SlaterPod, everyone. Today, really happy to have Longye Wan on the podcast. So Longye is a research scientist at Tencent AI Lab, the research division of Tencent, one of China's largest, if not the largest tech company. Uh, hi, Longye, and thanks so much for joining. Hi, Florian. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm very happy and honored to uh, be uh, invited by Slater. Thanks. Are you joining us from Shenzhen today, or you're some other part of China? I'm in uh, Shenzhen uh, and uh, also in my company. There you go. Yeah, I used to go there. I used to live in Hong Kong and then, you know, from time to time went across the borders to Shenzhen. So obviously it's one of the fastest changing cities and huge. Okay, it's very close. Uh, uh, in my, uh, out of my uh, side, my window, I can see Hong Kong, the mountains. Great. Yeah. For, for me, it was usually the other way. I used to go running uh, near, so there's a couple of great trails like near the, the mainland border. And so I could see over to Shenzhen. So uh, there you go. Shenzhen, tech capital of, uh, of China. So before we start, and we're going to talk about ChatGPT, machine translation, you know, LLMs and how they perform in, in machine translation. But tell us a bit more about Tencent. Uh, some of the people, some of the listeners in in the US and Europe may not be familiar with the company. They may not know that, for example, WeChat is like, you know, the major app in China and it's uh, it's basically a, a Tencent product. Just, just introduce us a bit more to Tencent. Tencent is one of the China's largest uh, tech companies. It is known for its diverse range of services from the social media to game. game. Uh, one of the most uh, popular, as you mentioned, is the product is uh, WeChat. Uh, it is a kind of uh, multi-purpose messaging, social media, and a mobile payment app. But in China today, the WeChat is not just an app. Uh, it is an integral part uh, of our daily life of many people. Uh, for example, we use it for everything from chatting with our friends to paying bills uh, people can use to share their daily uh, stories in the moments feature. Uh, and uh, even uh, now I'm in company, uh, we are working on the enterprise version of WeChat. Uh, we discuss our ideas, uh, we email, and we schedule our work plan. So uh, it's really uh, multifaceted. Uh, this is the genera uh, general story about Tencent and its WeChat. And Tencent's been around for quite some time. I remember even back in like the 2010-ish when I was based in Hong Kong, people like we're talking about Tencent like it's a fast rising company. So it's been around for 15 plus years now already. I think we have 25 years maybe because I have worked here for five years. Yeah, it was one of the uh, one of the bigger moments when I uh, switched iPhone and I uh, here when I moved back from mainland China and I, I wasn't able to reactivate my mainland WeChat version anymore. So uh, I would have <laughs> it was one of the bigger moments. Obviously, when you're in mainland, yeah, a lot of stuff runs through WeChat. But let's go on to the NLP MT side. So tell us more a bit about your professional background and your specific interest in like NLP and machine translation. Let me briefly uh, introduce myself. Uh, I earned my PhD uh, from Dublin City University. It's in Ireland uh, in 2018. My supervisors are Professor Chin Liu and Professor uh, Andy Wei. At that time, my uh, thesis topic is discourse aware new machine translation because uh, during my PhD, neural networks just uh, getting hot. I found most uh, new, yeah, I found most uh, new MT models only deal with the sentence level input. Uh, therefore, at that time, I proposed some novel architectures for document level new machine translation. Uh, this work was uh, uh, honored by the uh, with, with the best thesis award by the European Association for Machine Translation. Uh, so after uh, after graduation, I, uh, jo I directly go to Shenzhen and join Tencent. Uh, where I have been here um, deeply involved 
in both research part and the practical applications, uh, mostly on uh, machine translation and uh, NLP. Uh, until now, uh, I have been here, as I mentioned, for five years. Totally, uh, I have uh, uh, about more than 10 years experience in machine translation and NLP. I'm now a senior research fellow at uh, our lab. Recently, uh, everyone knows, with the rise of large language models, I have uh, also broadened uh, uh, my research areas. Uh, uh, for example, uh, I also, uh, apart from the uh, translation, I also do some other research work like uh, long text modeling, uh, AI content detection, multimodal, uh, and even some work uh, AI for science. So this is uh, uh, the gen uh, general uh, introduction about myself. Dublin University, obviously one of the hotspots globally for anything uh, related to MT and, and research. So now, why would Tencent be interested in language technology in general and MT machine translation in particular? Is there a couple of bullet points there that you can share? Yeah, good question. Uh, actually, Tencent is also a, a global uh, company, you know. So uh, language technical is uh, also crucial for Tencent because it uh, allows us to serve our diverse user base better. Uh, we do it for two, from two parts. The first, we, uh, MT has been integrated with our many Tencent applications. Uh, we, we still take uh, WeChat, for example, because it is very famous. Uh, actually, uh, if you use WeChat, you can, uh, you, uh, different people uh, in different uh, native languages can also auto-translate their messages to each other. Uh, so uh, we can communicate, uh, communicate with each other without the language boundaries. About the Tencent games, uh, MT actually uh, plays a significant role uh, in our overseas expansion because we uh, not only Chinese people play Tencent games, uh, even in Ireland, I have a lot of colleagues, they say, okay, this uh, Tencent game is very good. So uh, MT can ensure the gamers worldwide can enjoy our content in their native languages. So why, but we, we do not just stop at embedding MT uh, into our apps. Uh, we are also in the business of providing translation services. Uh, we have, in the past five years, I always working on building our first uh, interactive MT system. We call it a Transmart. You can also call it a Tencent Translate. Uh, actually, we already have a large number of uh, 2B and 2C MT users. It's kind of like, uh, I mean, just comparing it to maybe US products would be like Amazon Translate, Google Translate. So like a cloud native product that big enterprise companies can kind of connect to via API. Our translation uh, have different versions. Uh, we have a cloud API, uh, also web page you can try, uh, and also uh, the uh, uh, other client uh, you can install in your uh, Windows or Mac uh, system. So it, it's really uh, friendly to uh, professional translators, not only to uh, give a web page to uh, try some uh, text translation. Can we just briefly touch on like the perception of language technology in China generally. Um, like I haven't been back uh, before uh, since since uh, kind of all the COVID restrictions lifted, but before that I was in, in mainland uh, quite often. And I had the impression that people are more open to using language tech kind of in daily life uh, also. And in business kind of, uh, you know, business users tended to be more open to using kind of raw MT for kind of more, um, mission critical use cases and, and consumers, for example, were happy to can maybe consume like AI dubbed or subtitled content. Is that an accurate perception? And how kind of how do you feel how pervasive is like machine translation use and acceptance in, in, in China? That's a great question. Yeah, uh, I can still use the, our translation product, uh, Transmart, uh, as a lens to uh, view this l landscape. Uh, on the, uh, I, I, I think uh, two part. Uh, one part is B2C, so uh, it's uh, uh, individual users. Another part is B2B because uh, we have a business side. So about the B2B front, uh, we have witnessed uh, a significant uh, traction. 
many uh, organizations like uh, United Nations and the companies such as Memosource and the China Literary, uh, Literature uh, Company uh, have already integrated our translation solutions. Uh, for example, the China uh, Literature uh, Company can directly use my domain-specific uh, system to translate their web novels. I, I know some, uh, someone like uh, Chinese web novels because uh, uh, it's really different uh, content. So uh, they tell me, uh, after they use our uh, domain-specific system, uh, they can directly publish this text for readers without, uh, with, with very few uh, human possibility. So the, I think this uh, story can indicate a growing trust in machine translation for uh, missing critical tasks or professional uh, scenarios. Uh, this is uh, uh, about uh, B2B. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, also B2C is, uh, I think uh, the landscape is uh, incredible uh, variety. Uh, we see applications ring from the formal informal translations. For example, I found some students like to translate their publications or papers, and some uh, other users maybe just translate their casual chats during a meeting. Uh, this is uh, a different uh, uh, needs, I think. Uh, about the domains, it's uh, quite uh, expensive. Uh, spanning from general areas like before, news reporting, uh, we, we translate uh, different uh, news from uh, different uh, uh, languages into Chinese. And also uh, we found uh, we have some specific domains like financial and medical translations now. It is just goes to show how deep and wide the appetite of for machine translation among the Chinese public, public I think. Very much, right? Now, how good is it, uh, like at the moment, state, state of the art, Chinese, English, English, Chinese, and then maybe for some of the, the other, uh, you know, less frequent languages, like what are, I guess not how good it is, but like what are some of the main channel challenges that may actually be left? Because I know it's, it's quite good already. If we uh, talk about the Chinese to English machine translation, I think uh, uh, it has been uh, significantly progress. Because uh, apart, of, uh, uh, apart from the technical uh, improving every year, we only talk about the data size. In the past 10 years, the data size between the Chinese to English uh, increased quite a lot. Uh, if we, uh, someone maybe know the WMTCR task for, uh, uh, for academics, uh, the Chinese to English translation direction is considered as a high resource empty task. So um, this is the first part. Another, another part is uh, many researchers like me or developers, they also uh, like to work on some Chinese specific challenges. Uh, I think uh, uh, there is a, a difference bef between English. For, for example, the Chinese often uh, omits pronouns in a sentence. Uh, we, we don't frequently, uh, frequently use pronouns. Uh, because the uh, humans can infer what we uh, omitted. Uh, but uh, we call this phenomena as uh, pheno phenomena as uh, per job. However, uh, the English part typically requires all the pronouns. So it poses difficulties when we translate from the per job language like Chinese to a non per job language like English, uh, a lot of difficulties. But in the past uh, five years, we, uh, we, we proposed a lot of uh, methods to solve uh, such detailed challenges. Uh, now, today, when, when we uh, try some advanced MT products, uh, you can see uh, this problem, problem is well handled by uh, uh, Google Translator, Tencent Translator, and uh, Baidu Translator, like, like this. So therefore, about the Chinese to English, uh, English translation, the quality is really comparable with human translators uh, uh, in some scenarios. However, uh, you ask uh, how, if there is some uh, challenge li uh, left, uh, I mainly talk about uh, two aspects uh, which I mainly focus on. The first is uh, Chinese to non-English languages. So for example, Chinese to Portuguese. Uh, we, we want to directly translate the Chinese to Portuguese. Uh, it has uh, grown 
it hasn't grown at the same pace as Chinese, Chinese to English part. Uh, we haven't, because uh, the first thing, we haven't seen a big jump in data size for this language pair in the past 10 years. So uh, there is uh, still uh, some work to be done there. The second uh, part is the more challenging domain. Uh, most uh, most times when we talk about translation, maybe uh, we want to translate uh, news or other common texts. But uh, for some challenging things about uh, web novels, I have mentioned I'm working on is this for uh, three years. Uh, it uh, has uh, various subdomains like uh, fantasy, wuxia, urban tales, different subdomains. These stories are full of cultural references and often have a long plots. Uh, so when we translate, it is not, not just about getting words right. It is about uh, capturing uh, the culture, background, the feeling, and the depth of these tales. So I think we need to do some things on these two directions, no matter it is about uh, data construction, uh, method innovation, or evaluation method. I even think about how to uh, use the large language, large language model to help this. Yeah, the uh, web novels you're describing, it's probably the final frontier for machine translation. I mean, I can only imagine for a human translator getting getting all of the cultural references, all of kind of the inside Chinese kind of very compact expressions, right? That's maybe some of them are barely translatable in the first place. So uh, yeah, maybe with the LLMs, it's, it's going to help a bit, give more context. Uh, speaking of LLMs, like on a high level, what's your current view of kind of the state of the art of machine translation using kind of chat GPT like models? Actually, in my uh, one of my recent paper, uh, the name is the document level uh, machine translation with large, large, large language models. Uh, we have provided a systematic evaluation on this. Uh, we found that the chat GPT models have shown greater uh, premise in generating human-like translations, especially, I think, uh, uh, in three main parts. The first is uh, challenging domains, as I mentioned before. I also try ChatGPT to translate uh, uh, literary text uh, or dialogues, because uh, when we talk about the challenging domains, I think these two domains immediately to come to our mind. How about uh, the GPT-4? Uh, it has been a game changer, I think. Uh, we found it outperformed uh, top MT systems in these two domains, even we use human, uh, professional human uh, evaluations. Uh, the, the, second, yeah. the second thing is uh, document level translation. Uh, uh, as you mentioned, uh, the, one of the standout features of GPT-4 is its ability to grasp the broader context. Uh, when we're translating entire documents, like the entire uh, chapter of the novels or entire the doc financial documents, we need uh, uh, that, the flow, the consistency from the start to finish. However, uh, GPT-4 can handle it well, also well. Both can contain, uh, keep good uh, flu fluency and uh, coherence. Uh, that's we 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 also have some uh, experiments in our in this paper. Uh, you can go to the details. Uh, the third part is beyond the translation. I think this is the most amazing part. The GPT-4 isn't just the translating. I think it is like uh, more like a thinking. You uh, because it can not only tell which translations it's better, even uh, especially when the discourse knowledge is needed but it can also provide the detailed explanations for the users. So we check uh, every uh, explanations. Uh, uh, we ask the universe, uh, professors in the university to check them, but it can go to 90% uh, explanation is correct. So that's the amazing part. So in general, I want to uh, say that traditional MT models have trouble with languages, domains, have little data. But uh, however, uh, large, lang large language models have a vast print-trained knowledge and uh, generalization ability. They can 
effectively uh, bridge the gap. So we, uh, that's why they, pro they can provide uh, quality translation even uh, when sometimes the data is sparse. And you were playing around with some of this in, your, in another paper, a new trends in machine translation using large language models, case examples with ChatGPT, and in there you said that you're brainstorming interesting directions for MT using LLMs, including, and now, stylized MT, interactive MT, translation memory-based MT, as well as a new evaluation paradigm using LLMs. Um, that's a lot. Give us uh, a short summary of the main findings there, because these four points sound incredibly interesting, and I want to talk about them uh, in more detail. But first, maybe just the main uh, kind of framework there. Thanks for your interest uh, in this paper. Uh, in, uh, I think this is a position paper. Uh, in this paper, we uh, list uh, several, as you mentioned, the promising directions for machine translation tasks, but using the large language models. Uh, while traditional MT systems have done a commendable, I think, job, uh, the, but the capabilities of large language model open up a whole new world of possibilities. We test the examples uh, using GPT 3.5 and GPT 4 for different tasks, but most tasks are beyond the basic translation task. Uh, like the stylized MT, it is not only require translation, it requires translating original text to a specific language, but also in a, a desirable style. Uh, the task is difficult for a traditional MT system since they are trained only for uh, faithful translation of the original text. We demonstrate that a uh, large language model can perform this task well, as I think because their capabilities of translation and the stylized generation are, are intertwined. Uh, we, uh, we also, yes, we also talk about uh, uh, interactive MT uh, the conversational ability of um, uh, large, language, large language model uh, enable us can interact with them in a dialogue way. Uh, for example, we have uh, uh, back and forth with them, uh, guiding the translation based on the ongoing conversation. Finally, you got a perfect translation. Uh, although sometimes we found uh, sometimes uh, this chat GPT cannot uh, st strictly follow your or understand your instruction at that time. Uh, but we still see some potential in these directions. Okay, this is uh, uh, the general idea about our paper. What about translation memory-based MT? What, what does that mean? Like, did, you're using translation memory to train in advance, or are you using it as a prompt, or? You know, large long model can uh, um, memorize a long contest. So we, uh, yes, some, some memories like we have uh, some uh, like uh, uh, bilingual word, word uh, vocabulary or something like uh, the example sentences, sentence pairs. We want to uh, ask the large language model always remember this uh, key, I think, uh, 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 the information every time he translate this uh, uh, one, one sentence after uh, until he finished all the uh, uh, sentences in the document. So th th I think it is uh, a same thing in our, in, in the uh, CAT system. Uh, CAT system, we also have uh, some memories like uh, this uh, key information, some use uh, provided by users or uh, some others. Uh, we just try to use large learning model, try to remember this. Now, you also um, hit on another note in that paper, an interactive MT, that you're saying one challenge is how to design user interfaces that are intuitive and user-friendly, yet also informative and flexible. Is that something you can, you, you just put out there as a challenge, or have you thought a bit more deeply about this, and um, can you share anything there? Because that is a big problem. How do people actually work with these, like translators, how do they work with these in, in real life, right? I mean, is that something you, you thought about more deeply? Yes, well, because when you uh, talk about interactive uh, MT, the user interface actually is the front and uh, center, uh, because it bridges the user and the users and the technology. Uh, 
uh, first, uh, it should be got uh, to be easy to use, I think, uh, like a clean design, straightforward instructions, and uh, quickly feedback. Uh, however, the user interface always need uh, uh, another part is uh, should also pro uh, very in informative and flexible. It should provide the users with enough information because uh, some users may be very professional. They are professional translators. So they, they try to understand uh, the translation process or choices the system is making. They could, uh, uh, this could uh, involve showing alternative translations, providing the explanations, uh, or giving users ability to intervene the translation process. Therefore, designing su such a user interface with large language, long, large language model is a challenge. That's why I think it's an interesting direction for both researchers and the development. Now, in another uh, post, I think, I'm not sure if it was on GitHub or another post that you made, a uh, new evaluation paradigm for MT using LLMs, you, you kind of prompted ChatGPT in natural language to evaluate uh, translation. Um, like, what's a potential use case for, for this? Uh, was it more just playing around with it, or is there something uh, deeper there? Yes, so we tried this in, both in this paper and uh, the, another paper I just mentioned, document level, MT with large language model. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, traditionally, we always rely, rely on the professional translators or automatic metrics to measure the translation quality. But with the large language model like ChatGPT, uh, we have a new tool like uh, in the field. Uh, imagine uh, 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 there is a case. We need a quickly evaluation of a machine translated uh, business document. Instead of waiting for human translators' feedback, ChatGPT can swiftly uh, access if the translation is up to mark or it is need a human touch. So what's more, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, LLM uh, all, all can offer a, a multi-faceted evaluation. They do not just uh, give a binary score or uh, one to five score, good or not, or point one, one, po one point or two point. They can also provide nuanced uh, feedback, even explaining their judgments in a natural language way. So that's why I talk about the new evaluation methods with LM. Machine translation quality estimation is obviously one of the fields that's um, really um, needs to integrate these these new technologies quite quite quickly. I think they're the the large language models are making a, a quite a sizable impact. Um, now moving to um, one last topic there, personalized machine translation and multimodal machine translation. You also touched upon in your article, I think. Uh, actually, I did pull it up now. I think it is on GitHub, right? It's on uh, on a GitHub post you made. So tell, tell us more about personalized MT and multimodal uh, MT. About the first one, our uh, research indicated that LLMs uh, have a potential to make um, machine translation more personalized. Uh, this uh, means the translation uh, could uh, be adopted to specific needs or preference of users. Uh, for, example, for example, the models can take into account their uh, preferred style, their vocabulary, or the level of form formality. So this, this could enhance the user's ex experience and uh, make the translation more useful and relevant, I think. That's why I uh, talk, also talk about this part. About the uh, multimodal MT, uh, it's, I think it gets even more exciting. Uh, traditionally, yeah. Machine translation uh, is, uh, has uh, been about all about the text. Uh, in the future, I think, with uh, multimodal large language model, it might be possible to translate not only text, but also other types of data like audio image. Uh, as uh, you just mentioned, uh, we uh, 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 my another direction, uh, what, a research direction uh, is about uh, this part. So we built a uh, multimodal large, uh, multi uh, model large language model. We call it a Macau LM. Uh, this work is trying to integrate the text, image, audio, video, 
uh, with uh, LLM. Uh, but this is a uh, uh, first try. In the future, we, we want to, the first future work, I think we want to try explore the image translation uh, task based on this model. So uh, maybe uh, later, one month later, we can update our uh, GitHub and uh, papers about this. So Macaw is M-A-C-A-W, right? Yes, it's a bird. Because uh, we th I think this bird is very colorful. It can be, uh, and uh, parrots can also uh, speak uh, some different languages. Uh, that's why I use this name. Let's take a kind of 30,000 foot view on language tech and machine translation, like from a uh, regional point of view. So do you see any differences in what's being pursued in China versus the US versus the European Union? Or is everything kind of moving at the same, maybe not speed, but like are research interests somewhat different in China or is it is it very similar uh, in MT and NLP at the moment? Of course, uh, maybe you, you also found, uh, found that. Uh, how, uh, for example, take myself for example, uh, as a researcher, uh, and, and, and the native language is Chinese. Every time I think about the methods or about the applications, the first question is how uh, it performs in uh, uh, my mother language, Chinese. So there is a strong force on Chinese uh, specific challenges and uh, uh, Chinese centric translation. Uh, like I mentioned, not uh, use English as a bridge language. We want to directly translate uh, from Chinese to other languages because try to avoid the error propagation. Uh, and, take, uh, and also have related works uh, I have mentioned uh, for uh, zero pronoun translation. I have been here for five years. Uh, recently, I also quickly adopt uh, uh, the Lama 2 to a Chinese version of Lama. We want to enhance the understanding and the generation in Chinese language. And now uh, we are also building our own uh, Chinese-centric large language models. I think most uh, Chinese researchers from the company and the universities, they are also now working on building the Chinese-centric large language models. So yeah, one of the key challenges or like what we're trying to do is, is not going via the English pivot, but like having enough data to be, to use Chinese directly to other languages, right? Is, is that, is it still going via English quite often or, or is, is Chinese now very much kind of um, independent from English and can go to many of the other higher resources languages directly? It's only about from the uh, technical uh, and uh, academic aspects. We we say, uh, because every uh, if I want to build a system, a translation system, uh, you know, uh, Chinese users. Uh, if uh, uh, if it is uh, based in China, Chinese users always uh, try to use it as a one uh, direction. So for example, Chinese to other languages. If we don't have enough. Uh, data and um, uh, to build the direct directly uh, translation, we, we need a lot of uh, uh, subsystems like uh, pipeline. We first uh, translate uh, from Chinese to English and English to Spanish. So it's uh, not a very uh, good way for uh, technical, I think. So the system will be very huge. And once we had uh, some bad feedbacks about the translation quality, we needed to uh, uh, yes, fix the bugs one by one, maybe. Yeah. So th that's only considered about the academic and the development things. What are some of the cool things you're working on in the second half, 2023, 2024? Are you uh, staying with uh, GPT and LLMs and machine translation, or you're uh, doing starting some other initiatives? Next year, I, I, it's hard to see, but in the uh, next half year, I have two main directions, uh, I think. Uh, the first uh, uh, is about the major problems about the large language models. Uh, as uh, you, you maybe uh, found some uh, error. If you try ChatGPT, it is good, but it also have uh, problems. The first thing is hallucination. Yeah, hallucination is maybe my next step I want to try, especially about the consistency with uh, facts. Uh, the second thing is uh, problems with uh, uh, timeline-less information. 
uh, because uh, today maybe uh, the U.S. Uh, president is A, but uh, t <laughs> but tomorrow is not A, so it's different. Uh, the innovation uh, and the, the last thing is uh, uh, very interesting is uh, we can have some uh, innovative uh, applications based on ChatGPT API. Uh, uh, even we want to solve some MT problems, uh, we we can use the uh, Large language, large language model as a key component of our MT system, which can solve some uh, long, uh, long, long text translation in consistency problems like that. So this is the first part. The second part is about uh, MT task with uh, large language model. The first is uh, I have mentioned is a super long document translation. In my previous pitch, I didn't try much longer. But in the future, I want to try to translate, uh, for example, the 20 chapters in a book. So how does a large language model handle extensive uh, documents without harming the coherence and the content? So traditional models often uh, lose the context in a long uh, text. So I want to solve this problem. The second is, uh, I have mentioned, but I will continue to do that, literary translation. In WMT this year, I have held a shared task on this. But uh, this time, I, because of the data copyrights, this year we only have uh, uh, Chinese to English. But next year, uh, we uh, also have more languages, like uh, Chinese to German, Chinese to uh, Portuguese, like this. So this is another uh, fantastic native area for large long, large long model. I want to it to do some more challenging things, and uh, I think it's cool. So uh, that's my uh, future work. Great. Well, thanks so much for uh, taking the time today. Really interesting conversation. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And I'm, I'm very happy and honored to be invited by Slater. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Longe. Bye-bye.